Um, so the title of my talk is Keeping Your GI Tract Moving and Grooving in the Golden Years. And a bit about myself. Um, I went to school at Duke here in North Carolina. I'm from Virginia originally. Sorry if there are any Tar Heel fans. Um, so I went to medical school at University of Virginia and uh, did my residency at University of Pennsylvania. Um, my fellowship up in Providence, Rhode Island. And then we moved down here um, about four years ago or so, and I've been with this practice here ever since, called Charlotte Gastroenterology and Hepatology. We've got offices sort of scattered throughout the Charlotte metropolitan area. I primarily practice in the sort of southern region. I go back and forth between Matthews and Valentine, mostly in Matthews and down to Monroe a little bit. Uh, my family and I are, are Reformed Jews. Um, we belong to Temple Bethel and the JCC. And this is my wife, Amanda, my son, Jonah, my daughter, Maya. Um, so what's important to my senior patients? Essentially, you know, what's important to my senior patients is um, what's important to most people, which is basically that you want to be able to enjoy life for as long as possible with the people that you love and care for. And so that my hope with today's talk is that basically everything will sort of be focused around this goal. You know, how will we be able to enjoy the things that we enjoy for as long as possible with the people that we care for? So the first part of that quote, you know, how do, how do we, how do we um, become able to do the things that we enjoy? Well, really what we're talking about here in terms of digestive health is things that affect the quality of life. What kinds of things keep you in the home, keep you from being able to go out and enjoy what you like to do in the world, uh, keep you from being able to visit family. And these are common issues that I, I deal with on a daily basis with folks, and we'll be talking about these today. Um, the first is um, problems with constipation. The next one that we'll talk about is, is called irritable bowel syndrome. Um, we'll talk a little bit about diverticulosis and diverticulitis and what's the difference. This is really a common thing you can deal with. And then something that doesn't get mentioned but is an incredibly common problem are um, issues with incontinence, which is a really devastating um, problem. Although it, it doesn't really impact quantity of life, it can have huge detriments on, on quality of life. And so the second part of that quote, how do we do things that we enjoy doing as long as possible? Well, what we're talking about then, of course, is quantity of life. And so then we get into these issues like colon cancer screening, and we'll talk a bit about today about dietary recommendations and lifestyle modifications to make that quantity of life as much as possible. So this is my word of warning. What I do is not glorious. You know, someone's got to do it. But usually what I, what I what, what the things that I talk about are usually kept behind locked doors. And so it can be a bit disarming, you know, to bring these things out in the public. And although I'm used to it because I talk about it eight hours a day, every day, most people are not. And so I hope we can discuss these sort of things freely. I'm happy to, you know, talk with you, you know, on a personal level after if you like. But as far as I know, everybody poops. <laughs> <laughs> That's so cute. Uh, you guys remember that book? It's a great book. It's got like all these little animals and the different shapes of poop that they eat. It's cute. Okay, constipation. Everybody knows what constipation is. I don't think we need to discuss the definition. Um, normal. What's normal? Well, normal ranges. I remember getting the calls from my grandmother because she was really concerned because she didn't have a bowel movement that day and needed to discuss it. But it turns out that's okay. Um, normal frequency ranges from about three times a week to about twice a day. So there's a huge variety of what's considered normal. And an individual's normal may change with time. We'll talk about that, but basically, as we age, it actually becomes typical to not move your bowels as, as frequently as, as you used to. It's quite common. We consider something to be problematic for lack of a better word, um, if people are moving their bowels two or fewer times a week. Um, and the other issue I deal with is not just frequency, but also difficulty going. Sometimes people will go every day, but they have a hard time doing so. 
And I sort of lump that in with constipation as well, just difficult evacuation. So what causes these problems? Um, in general, people either have a slow-moving colon. Who knows what the colon is, by the way? Yeah. We've all heard the word. What is it? Large Right. So it's the colon is, is really the same thing as the large intestines. These things can essentially be used interchangeably. Uh, it's the basically the last stop along the road before the exit, right? And the colon is really responsible for absorbing water. That's what it does. It doesn't absorb any nutrients at all. Um, so you can actually live without your colon if you needed to. Um, it doesn't absorb vitamins. It absorbs water. as its job. Um, and so when things move through slowly, more water gets absorbed because it sits around in the organ longer. And then this leads to stools that are sort of dry and hard and, and darker. And those become more difficult to pass and can be bothersome. Um, sometimes the colon is working absolutely fine, in particular with um, women who have had multiple kids before, or with age alone, what happens is the muscles that um, go along the bottom of the floor, they kind of hook to the front of the pelvis and the back of the pelvis and sort of act like a hammock in between. Well, gravity has its effect over the, over the course of time, and those muscles start to relax a little bit. And what ends up happening is um, the there's a better slide here later, but um, everything sort of straightens out and it, it's not quite um, in the right orientation and it can be hard to sort of evacuate properly. So the colon's about three feet long. Um, it absorbs about 90% of the water that it's exposed to. And there are common um, problems other than just sort of normal aging that can cause constipation to be aware of. The, one I come across all the time is medication side effects. So really common medications such as blood pressure medicines cause constipation. Um, narcotic pain medications are notorious for causing problems with constipation. And it becomes really easy um, when you're on two, three, four, five different medications to run into a situation where you're taking medications to treat side effects of other medications, sometimes not even knowingly. And then you can sort of run into the spiral where then you take another medication to treat a side effect of that one. So it's really important if you're dealing with problems with constipation to sort of sit down with your doctor and say, listen, you know, I'm having this problem. Is there anything that I'm taking that could be leading to this? And maybe is there a substitute that would work better? Or if not, you know, how do I deal with this problem otherwise? Women have more problems with constipation than men, but certainly both genders get it. Parkinson's disease is something that quite commonly leads to constipation. And it turns out that treatments for Parkinson's disease also cause constipation. So uh, folks with Parkinson's have a very difficult time with this. Um, one of the consequences of stroke is that it affects the nerves that go to the gut. And as I said, natural aging um, can lead to this too. Ineffective emptying is when the colon moves, moves things through uh, normally, but in the end, things just won't come out. And the main problem that causes this is just a natural weakening of the pelvic floor muscles. Recurrent bouts of infections in the colon can lead to that too. Call it diverticulitis. I can give up my chair if you need. No, that's your right. Sure. Standing room only. That's it. John Crack. Right. I know. All right. Uh, what can we do about it? The main thing that we do about this generally, in addition to sort of um, you know trying to figure out the cause and addressing the underlying cause. 90% of the time, it just is what it is, and we end up using laxatives to treat constipation. Um, we have things like stool softeners or stimulant laxatives that make the, the colon move faster. A lot of these things are readily bought over the counter. A product I like a lot is called Miralax. I like it because it's very safe and um, is pretty mild. It doesn't usually send people running to the bathroom. Um, Miralax is also available by prescription. It can get expensive to buy over the counter but um, most of the times insurance companies will cover it if it's prescribed, which can be helpful to people. Um, what else can we do? So diet and exercise is really key. In terms of diet, we strive to eat about 20 to 30 grams of fiber a day. The amount of fiber in the foods should be on the labels, and you can basically add up what you're eating, and it doesn't need to be exact, but um, in general, shoot for about 20 or 30 grams a day. And then you want to sort of supplement this with plenty of water in order to stay hydrated. 
Like I said, the job of the colon is to absorb water, and the more dry things get, the harder it is to, for things to move along. The fiber um, is basically kind of goes in one end and out the other, and it helps hold on to water and, and, and helps things come out the other end. The fiber supplements I like a lot. My favorite is probably Benefiber because it doesn't have as much chalkiness as Metamucil does. I have no share in the company. It's just what I find people tolerate the best. Um, like I said, my favorite laxative that's over the counter at least is, is, is Miralax. Um, we use it in kids, infants, pregnant women. It basically doesn't interfere with any other medications. Um, and then very, very rarely, people have such bad constipation that they actually require surgery. Um, I probably come across this maybe once every other year. It's, 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 it's super rare, but sometimes um, people who have blockages or obstructions um, need to have surgery because of it. So we're going to move on. We can stop now for questions. We can come back to it. Um, interrupt if need be. Um, so irritable bowel syndrome is another thing. I probably spent 50% of my day talking about IBS, irritable bowel syndrome. Um, this is basically, anytime you ever hear a doctor say that you have a syndrome, what, what they're saying is that they don't know what causes it. So that's what we mean by syndrome. So for instance, um, we used to you know, call AIDS AIDS because we had no idea it was caused by a virus. So that S stands for syndrome. We just knew everybody was getting sick and we didn't know why. Of course, now we know that there's a virus that causes that. That's a, a 